A very warm good afternoon to everyone. Students, myself, Dr. Pooja Kapoor, Assistant Professor, Maharaja Agnusen University, School of Basic and Applied Sciences. Today, I am here to discuss with you about filter circuits. As we all know that uh, when we uh, go through the process of rectification, we convert alternating current into direct current. But the direct current which we obtain at the output contains pulsations. So remove the, to remove these pulsations and to get a constant voltage, we use these filter circuits. So let's get started. The output of half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier is not pure DC, but it contains pulsations. These pulsation can be smoothened or removed by either passing alternating output around the filter circuit, which consists of a load, resistance, a shunt capacitor, or a series inductor. The combination of capacitance and inductance is more effective. Filter circuit is basically a device which converts the DC component obtained from the rectifier output and allows the DC component to reach the load. Filter circuits are connected in series with the rectifier circuit. It reduces the value of the ripple factor and it provides us a regular constant voltage. The presence of AC content in the DC output which we obtain about the, after the process of rectification is called ripples. The pulsating DC which we obtain after rectification is not suitable for operating sensitive and precious electronic devices. So we have to use a filter circuit so that we can regulate the pulsating DC and get a constant voltage supply to operate these electronic circuits. The most commonly used filter circuits are series inductor filter, also known as L filter, shunt capacitor filter, choke input filter, also known as LC filter, capacitor input filter, which is also called phi section filter. Now we will discuss all these types of filter circuits. Uh, first of all, importance of filter circuit. In the diagram, you can see that this is the pulsating DC, which we obtained after the process of rectification. When we pass it to the filter circuit in the output, we get a constant DC, which is, uh, which is uh, not containing any pulsations and is constant. So while we use a filter circuit, we mainly use a capacitor or an inductor in a filter circuit. So why do we use a capacitor or an inductor in a filter circuit that we will going to discuss in this slide. For using a capacitor as a filter, it has to be provided by parallel pulsating voltage, due to which the process of charging and discharging occurs. Capacitor charges itself during the increase in the voltage value. It stores that energy in the form of electrostatic field. When it gets lesser voltage, the capacitor returns its stored energy to the circuit and thus it reduces the ripple factor while discharging through the road. So uh, by this process of charging and discharging of capacitor, the pulsating value is removed and we get a regulated constant DC. And now about the inductor. When the uh, alternating current is passed through the choke coil, a voltage is produced as per the Lenz's law, which opposes the change occurring in the current. Thus, the tendency of current is minimized and we achieve a constant voltage. Which is obtained, uh, which we obtain at the inductor's output, and we get a regulated supply which is uh, not containing any pulsations. Now we'll discuss the first type of filter, which is series inductor filter. In a series inductor filter, an inductor is connected in series with the load resistance. When the current passing through the inductor L tends to increase. It opposes the growth of the current by storing the energy in the form of magnetic field. And when the current passing through the inductor decreases, it maintains the current by providing the energy which ha it has stored in itself in the form of magnetic field. Thus, it regulates the supply and we get a constant output. This is the diagram for the series inductor filter. Here you can see that this is the rectifier. 
before the rectification, we have used these diodes, D1 and D2. We use diodes for the rectification because they only conduct when they are forward biased and do not conduct when they are reverse biased. So after this process of rectification, we obtain the this pulsating DC here, which we again pass through this filter circuit. This filter circuit is containing inductor, which is connected in series with the rectifier. So after we pass it through the filter circuit, these pulsations are removed to a very greater extent and a constant voltage is obtained. Here you can see the outputs which we obtain after we connect with the filter. An inductor provides an easy path for the DC while it shows resistance for the passage of AC. So it offers high impedance to the AC output and reduces its component in the output while the DC component passes easily through it. So we get the DC which is uh, not containing any pulsations. Next we have a shunt capacitor filter. Since the inductor filter which we have discussed is suitable for only light rows, like the resistance values which we can uh, use in case of inductor uh, circuit has to be very less. For heavy load or high resistance values, we have to use another filter, which is known as capacitor filter. The capacitor filter is connected in parallel with the load resistance. Here you can again see that this is the rectifier where we have these diodes connected. And when we obtain the rectifier output after passing through these diodes D1 and D2, it has pulsations. So next we pass these pulsating output through the capacitor and we obtained the output across the load resistors. You can see that the capacitor which we have used here as a filter circuit has been connected in parallel to the circuit, right? So, uh, uh, and this is the output. So you can see that the in the output, the, rectific, uh, the pulsations have been removed to a greater extent. When the voltage across the load rises, the capacitor starts charging and reaches its maximum value and it stores energy within itself. When the voltage begins to fall, the capacitor discharges through the load and delivers its stored energy to the load. In this way, the capacitor maintains the overall load voltage. Since capacitor is an easy path for the AC but blocks DC, so it passes the AC components through itself while the DC output goes directly to the load resistance. Impedance of the capacitor is chosen to be very small as compared to load resistance. The AC component of the output current finds a low reactant pass through the capacitor, so it passes through it, while the DC component is not affected and it passes directly to the load resistance and we get a constant supply. Now the next which filter which we are going to discuss is LC filter. In this LC filter, we can see that we have a combination of inductor as well as the capacitor. Here is inductor coil L, which is in series with the rectifier output. And next we have the capacitor, which is in parallel to this rectifier output. And the output is obtained across the load resistance RL. The combination LC filter is much more effective as compared to the series inductor and the shunt capacitor filter. And here you can see the output which we obtained after passing through the filter. Here you see that in the input we have this pulsating DC, but when it is passed through the filter circuit, the pulsations are removed to a very major extent and it is very effective in for filtration. The series inductor filter cannot be used when the load resistance is high, while the shunt capacitor filter cannot be used for the low load resistance. So we uh, tried to obtain a combination of these two filters, a combination of L and C, which is suitable for all resistance values. So that is why it is known as LC filter. Here we have an inductor, which permits the DC to pass through it easily. And secondly, we have capacitor, which is connected in parallel, which allows the DC to pass through the load resistance. So the pulsations are removed to a very large extent and the output we obtained is mostly constant.
For AC, the inductor has high reactance. Hence, it is opposed by the inductor. So only DC components pass through the L. So most of the AC component is already removed here. But the remaining fluctuations, which are somehow present, are passed by the capacitant capacitor builder because capacitive reactance is small for AC. So here, the ripple factor is low here and is independent of load resistance. Next, we have capacitor filter. A filter circuit in which capacitor has been fixed in the beginning. We have earlier uh, studied about the LC filter where we had uh, we had initially the inductor and after that we had the, the capacitor. But in this, it is in reversed. Here, we have at the input, we have capacitor first and later on the output is passed through, through the inductor. A filter circuit in which the capacitor has been fixed in the beginning and the inductor is fitted subsequently is called capacitor input filter. After the rectifier circuit, a parallel capacitor and a series inductor is uh, connected uh, with the load resistance as this arrangement of combining the capacitor and inductor is inverted L-shaped. That is why the capacitor input filter is also called L-filter. The pulsating output obtained from the rectifier is supplied to the capacitor input circuit. The capacitor mounted at the beginning of the filter circuit charges to its peak value during conducting half cycle when the, there is increase in the input voltage and preserves the energy within itself in the form of electrostatic field. And on the other hand, when it receives the lesser voltage during the non-conducting half cycle, the capacitor starts to discharge through the load and it returns the energy which it has stored within itself. So the overall, the voltage which we obtained is almost constant because it has been balanced by the charging and the discharging of the capacitor. The capacitor output already has very small ripple content within itself. So when this pulsating DC voltage is supplied to the capacitor, it smoothens or filters out the maximum of the ripples. After this, the capacitor output is passed through the inductor, which drops the rest of the ripples present in the capacitor's output due to its high reactance towards the AC component. Therefore, the inductor mounted in a series of loads prevents the current variation and we obtain a constant supply. Here you can see the circuit diagram for capacitor input filter. We have a capacitor and we have an inductor. Initially, the output which we obtain from the rectifier is passed through this capacitor. And after that, the remaining is passed through this inductor choke. And after that, we obtained the output at the load resistance here is the diagram for the output which we obtained. So you can see the pulsations have been removed to a major extent. Next, which we are to discuss here is pi section filter. Here you can see the circuit diagram for pi section filter. It contains two capacitors, C1 and C2 and a inductor. So we can see here that the rectifier output is first passed through the capacitor C1. And after that, we have L and C, a combination of L. Basically, so this filter is a combination of LC filter and a capacitor filter. But it forms the shape of the pi. It looks like the shape of the pi, so also known as pi section filter. This is the output which we obtained after passing through this pi section filter. You can see the output is mostly uh, constant and the pulsations have been removed to a greater extent. Pi section filter is a combination of capacitor filter and L section filter. Capacit pi filter is employed when a voltage greater than section filter is used. It consists of C1 filter, a choke coil L in series with another capacitor filter C2 connected across the load resistance. During each conducting interval, the capacitor C1 charges to a peak value. Capacitor passes appreciable amount of AC along with the DC and the remaining AC or fluctuations are removed by the series inductor L and the capacitor C2 and the LC filter. Pi filter produces unidirectional output voltage with minimum ripples. 
the cost, weight, size, and external field produced are the main disadvantages of the spy section filter. The cost is high, the weight is more, the size is more, and the external field which is produced during this is also a factor which affects its output. So these disadvantages can be overcome by replacing the inductor with a series resistor. So the filter which we now obtained is known as input RC filter. But it increases the DC voltage drop and the voltage regulation obtained in case of this capacitor input RC filter is poorer. And there is also the problem due to heat produced by the resistor. So sufficient ventilation has also been required in this case. Lastly, we have a filter which is known as T filter. It is a filter in which two interconnected inductors and a capacitor are arranged in such a way that it resembles the English alphabet T. In other words, a T filter consists of a LC filter and an inductor filter. At the starting, there exists a LC filter and the inductor is mounted at the end of this LC filter. The inductor placed in the beginning is called L1 while the one mounted at the end is called L2. T section filter completes by fixing capacitor C parallel to both these inductors. Due to smoothening or filtering action of these inductors L1 and L2, the output resulting from this filter contains only few ripples compared to the pi section filter. Normally, compared to a pi type filter, a T type filter provides low output voltages on a specific input voltage. However, it is better in case of removing the ripples. This is the diagram for T filter. We have inductor L1 here, the inductor L2, and uh, between these L1 and L2, we have in a parallel a capacitor C. So it is like the shape of T, so it is known as T section filter. The first inductor, L1, mounted in the filter circuit shows huge resistance and blocks the AC components found in the input. While the capacitor placed nearby this inductor lets the AC component pass through it, offering very less resistance to this AC components. Thus, the ripples vanish to a greater extent in the first half of the T filter, or through the filtering action of the LC filter. Despite this, if LC filter's output contains some small quantity of DC components, the inductor L2, the inductor L2, which is connected further near this LC filter, removes even this negligible quantity of ripples, and uh, uh, because it shows high resistance to the AC components and as a result we get a constant output or uncontaminated DC after the passing through the T section filter. There are some important definitions which we would like to discuss in the end of this lecture. The first one is ripple voltage. A small variation in the DC output voltage of a filter rectifier which causes the charging and discharging of the filter capacitor is called ripple voltage. These variations in the output voltages resulting from the capacitor's charging or discharging action are called ripple voltages. The second important term is ripple factor. The ratio of an output voltage DC or averaged value VDC obtained by a peak to peak ripple voltage VR in the filter circuit is called ripple factor. Basically, it's the ratio of the ripple voltage to the DC output voltage. A filter which is having a lower ripple factor is considered better in its efficiency. The ripple factor is basically equal to uh, ripple voltage divided by the DC value of filter output or R is equal to VR divided by VC. So that's all for this lecture. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the next lecture and I'll surely uh, answer all your queries. Thank you so much everyone for your attention.